Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 647. <laughs> I'm keeping track. And the topic today is um, on the topic of love, actions speak far louder than words. And I'm going to give you two particular areas of um, reflection on this so you can incorporate this, incorporate this into your life and be aware of it. Before I do that, let me choose myself so you know who I am, and uh, also tell you about the framing of this. So first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help women, women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which also what led to these talks called messages from the masculine inspiring your feminine heart. And I've done these for a couple of years now, over two years now, which is why I'm at number 647. <laughs> That's a lot, I know. And this topic I've talked about before, but I had another way of presenting it, hopefully to give you some insight and thoughts about your own love life, relationships, and particularly how you teach other people. If you're a parent, listen up. Um, so again, the topic today is on the topic of love. Sorry, I just went somewhere else for a second. The title again today on the topic of love, <laughs> actions speak far louder than words. Now, I said if you're a parent, especially this is going to be important. So this is also important if you're a child or if you were a child because this will have impacted your life and also how you impact other people's lives. So I want to give you a few angles on this. And before I go any further, let me just quickly say this is a Facebook Live first. So I may be interacting with people who are commenting live in the broadcast. If you're watching the replay or if you're watching this on YouTube, it started there first, so the comments and questions, you may not see who was talking when I responded, so I'll do my best to repeat what's said on the screen within, within um, uh, what's what sort of looking for? Within <laughs> context and framing, I'll do that, I'll leave it like that. All right, let's get in, let's check it, let's jump in. I've done enough pre preliminary preparation, let's jump in. So the first two things I wanna say about in the areas of love, the first one is one of the most obvious ones, which is if you've been in a relationship with anybody, sometimes people will tell you that your partner, excuse me, let me make it more direct. In a relationship, your partner has told you things about love, about how much they love you, professing their love, their care, compassion, and joy for you, yet they don't seem to demonstrate it in your experience. This is, by the way, <laughs> I'm going to keep drilling down further and further. This is something that happens after you're already in a relationship. Because the beginning of a relationship, most often actions and words tend to line up. So when they tell you how much they love you, they demonstrate it, you feel it, you feel loved, everything's great, wonderful. Fast forward a few weeks, a few months, a few years in that relationship, you may still be hearing from them saying, oh, I love you, and I mean this about you, and all this stuff, I care about you, but they don't do things to demonstrate that in the way they interact with you. That's unfortunate, but it's the way a lot of people are in a relationship. They're not as in it as you might think they would be. A little bit distressing. There's, I'm just thinking, I was gonna say there's two ways, I'm just making sure there are two different ways before I could get there, because I haven't got this scripted, so there are two ways to deal with this, I think. There might be more, but let me just see what I, the first two I come up with and so can go from there. First of all, um, you, can put up, you can put up with what is. You can just go, you know what? They tell me they love me, I trust that, I don't get it from them directly, but I'll be okay with it. Not recommended. The second way is, second way, <laughs> put right fingers up, is to actually talk to them. It's tempting sometimes to have a status quo and be okay with what it is. But the reality is, for me, is if you're not getting what you want in a relationship, the first thing is to have a conversation with your partner. Because maybe they just got, um, comfortable maybe they got uh, lazy and they stopped becoming or stopped acting as committed as you know they once were so any conversation can reawaken the spark can re remind them that they really do want to act the way they do which is to love you fully and express it which is great that's two things it just seems the third one or not well the third way is to walk away to give up and to leave which is possible too but if you're invested any time in the relationship at least have a conversation first now, I want to give you a, another level of that, that experience because I want to talk about the thing about when I said if you're a parent or if you were a child, because you're at least one of those. Because, 
And I've talked about this before, but I want to bring it another, bring in this another angle, which is basically because actions speak louder than words. If you're a parent, I should warn you now, this may not be pretty. <laughs> Your children are learning from you about relationships and love, not by what you tell them. It doesn't matter how much you instruct them on the ways of love. And you say, when you're with somebody, you should do that and do this and do the other. What they're watching is how you behave. Your actions are speaking louder than words with your children because what you're demonstrating to them is how to behave with somebody else in your interactions. Now, that also may sound pretty obvious because most of us have been around kids, notice they tend to mimic what we do. They copy us. We don't do what they don't, and this is the thing, they don't usually say, do what we say, <laughs> as always is one of the challenges, they don't always do what we say, at least once, not after we've initially told them, because they may respond to what we say once, maybe twice, but by the third time they'll default into all the behaviors. But what they will do is copy what we do. They practice and copy and use what we do as a way of acting. Again, actions speak louder than words. Now, let's flip that on the other side. Oh, thank you. Hi, Lauren. Nice to see you. Nice to see you yesterday, by the way. Um, thanks for the tips. Great to catch up with you on Saturday at the conference. Yes, agreed. It was nice to catch up with you as well. Um, and I did say at the beginning, this is a Facebook Live, so I'm doing interaction with people on screen, which you won't see if you're watching this on YouTube. <laughs> I cover my bases. So let's flip this the other way around. When you were a child, as in there were parents running around with you as well, they may have done the same thing as I just mentioned. They may have told you how to relate to other people, how to love and respect and appreciate people and have manners and everything else. However, especially when you were a younger child, your parents and, I was gonna say, does it depend on which parent? I would say your parents in general, in this context, would have likely have been interacting with each other in certain ways that may or may not match what they said. So they may have said to you, always be loving, kind, respectful, never raise your voice. But what they demonstrate in front of you, what they model for you in front of you, may be abusive or upset or arguing, or it may be the same as what they said. But the thing about it is, your learned behaviors that you program in automatically, because again, as a young child, you're watching them and copying what they do, is based upon what they actually present to you by actions, not by what they say. Because what they say may or may not stick, but what they do, will imprint magic, uh, massively, excuse me, magically, no, massively, automatically, and easily. So, to bring this into my field of operation, my skill set and my work, when you are wondering why your dating life is not working the way it is because you're noticing that you're doing things that you didn't plan on doing, like you're running automatic pilot, um, Say, I'm going to say another way, that didn't let that didn't satisfy me the way it came through. When you are, no, let me know when. <laughs> I'm presuming that's true for everybody. Okay, let me rewind a bit for a second. Again, as a child, you've learned these habits, you've picked up patterns, and you've copied what you were taught by what they did, and that's the way you've been imprinted. And I'm using the word imprint because this happens when we're very young. This is before our, um, uh, what do you call that piece of the brain? The, the, the frontal cortex comes online, which is your emotional expression and your, um, I want to call it control module, comes online. Up to that point, everything goes straight in because there's no filter. So you're getting imprinted by what happens. Move forward to your adult life. Those learned behaviors, not teachings, behaviors, because they're different, will now be guiding your adult dating life, relating life, without you even thinking about it. Your choices and partners, your experiences in a relationship, your traumas and challenges in a relationship are 99.9% .9 caused by what you learned as a child by the imprinting you happened when you were watching what your parents did. I want to make sure this is as clear as possible because I've talked about this before, but sometimes it doesn't land when we should get this point very clearly. Again, actions speak far louder than words. The actions that you learned from your parents, the behaviors you learned from your parents, will absolutely govern the way you relate to love as an adult later on. This is what I'm saying, if you're a parent, watch what you teach your children because they're gonna do the same thing with their adults. And if you don't demonstrate and teach the qualities you really wanna have them live and express, you may wanna course correct before it's too late for them. For you, 
<laughs> your parents did the same thing or didn't do the same thing. And quite likely, if you're like my parents and most people's parents, they weren't even aware of what they were doing. Excuse me, they weren't even aware that what they were doing was actually influencing their children's viewpoint about relationship when they became adults later on. In your case, and you may experience that yourself, where you, as an adult, are making some mistakes in relationships repeatedly, but you don't even know why you're doing it. This may be why. In fact, this may be the key that opens the door for you to change your dating relationship paradigm going forward. Now, the question of how you do that, I'll get to that in a second. But just be first become aware, because awareness is one of the first pieces of this journey, is to become aware of what works and what doesn't work. And when you start to become aware of what matches between the way you were learning from your parents and the way you're doing things as an adult now, there is quite likely a correlation, a commonality, a repeat, a handed down experience from what happened from your parents to what you do with yourself as an adult coming going forward. Now, again, you can imprint on your children how you wish, and again, I'm giving you suggestions how to do it the right way, but also at the same time, you want to change your own wiring. You know, it's, it's, it's not too late for you just because you have children, by the way. <laughs> So this is a piece of quick, a quick reminder, but also some guidance on what to do next. If you are someone who is aware that your relationship patterns haven't worked out so far and you want to change it, there is hope. And I, I'm going to put I'm going to put a link in the comments for a discovery session because I know that we can talk about this in greater detail offline. But here's the keys, just so you have to, if you want to do it yourself, which is possible but not easily done, do one on your own is if you're noticing that what you're doing as an adult, oh Lord, you've been having a couple of light bulb reflections. Good. <laughs> oh my, eek. <laughs> well, I hope this has been helpful to you. Let me give you a couple of quick tips, by the way, of how to re work with this. Because the thing is, for some people, getting help is a requirement. And I'm not saying that is for you, but for a lot of people it is. That's, why, that's one of the things I do with my clients is a large part of my work is that resolution of the past. However, if you want to do this on your own, here's some things to watch out for. First of all is, is the awareness thing, as I mentioned. And becoming aware that you have a repeated cycle in relationship is the first clue. In your dating life and dating experience, the key is to know that you've got an imprinted pattern is because it tends to repeat itself. Patterns repeat, that's one of, the, one of their, one of their um, indicators. So if you are in relationship with somebody and a certain pattern happens, and the same pattern happened in the last relationship and happened in the relationship before that. For example, if you are discovering that the relationship you're in now was um, suppressing emotions it wasn't expressing, and that happened in the last relationship, the one before that, the first clue, well, the first thing is to become aware of a pattern because it's happening again and again. The second piece we're aware of is you're the common denominator because you're in all those relationships. The good news is the pattern and you can be work, can work together because the thing isn't about somebody else, it's about you. Um, an example I would use, the example I would use just for my own personal life to, to share this one again, I've shared it before, is I was very aware in hindsight <laughs> that my dating life in my te late teens, early 20s never involved any arguments, which was like, that sounds so wonderful. However, in my early dating life, there would be no arguments because I would go get, I'd be with a girl or a woman, you know, age, age, age stage that would last a month, three months, maybe six months. And it would be argument free because when the argument happened, I would leave at the end of th one month, three months, six months. That was my pattern awareness. That was my, oh, hang a second, something's going on. It's in my stuff. And so I became aware that I was leaving because there was an argument. That was my pattern. That was my relationship ender for me. When I look back at my childhood and I started to really get clear about what was going on, first of all, I became aware of one thing. I never remember my parents arguing. My wiring was arguments and love don't go together according to what I realized looking back, hindsight being 2020. And so what I became clear about was I had to do some changes in my own interior programming. So to, not to say that I have to have arguments, that wasn't what I wanted, but to become aware that arguments don't mean the end of a relationship. That has been a game changer for me in my love life and in my friendships too. Because back then, all friendships as well as relationships would end because of a argument. That's the way it was. So my um, 
transformation was to become aware that my own um, choices well, excuse me, back up, let me say it another way. What I became aware of was my choices weren't my own. They were my parents. Thankfully, I, learned, I know how to change that and rewire that so I don't have the issue anymore. At least, not as prevalent, I'll put it that way. In your case, you may have a different experience of upbringing that was imprinting your relationship choices, and so your adult relationships have a repeated pattern, like I mentioned, for mine. And if you track it back, you may just see, first of all, the awareness that, oh, that's what my parents did. I look back now and realize when I was younger, that's how my parents interacted. Now, it may not be that conscious. The thing is, if it is, that's a good start, but it may not be that conscious. Either way, the focus is going to be to get clear about what the pattern is from your childhood. And if it's not working for you, because some patterns do work, but if it's not working for you, to get some support to change the wiring. Now, in my work with my clients, what, ha what I do with my clients, just to be transparent, is I do, I, I do a bunch of different things from my own background in psychology and spirituality put together. But a lot of what it comes back to is to change the wiring inside, reprogramming. And it's, it's funny when I say that because one of my earlier career choices, I was a computer programmer. Now I'm a, apparently a psychology programmer, <laughs> sort of, kind of. But what I do is help my clients rewire the circuitry inside so that the programming no longer governs their choices without the free will. And if you want free will back in your life, or your dating life especially, we should talk. And so I'm, what I'm going to do again do is I'm going to put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk because everyone's different and everyone's patterns, even though it's the same general um, formula, the content is very different every time. So I hope it's been of use to you. And again, I'll put the link in the comments so you can have a talk with me. This is big stuff, I know. And if you've had a challenge your relationship and you see this is the wiring or this is the... Um, this is the root cause. So you can see this is the biggest piece. Congratulations. Your next step could be freedom. But you'll take action. So I'll put a link in the comments for this conversation with me, and we should talk, and I can give you some guiding keys, steps, principles to get you moving forward, and see if we want to work together. So it's been of use to you. This is something that I've been talking about a lot in my work on and off, and today just felt like it was fresh up to talk about again. It's not a simple topic, but I know it can help you if you get some clarity. And definitely some, some light bulb reflections, as Lauren said. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, so to let you know where to find my broadcast, because I'm going to tell you about, so I'm going to wrap this up and tell you where you can find my replays. I do these talks every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, pretty much every day of the week. And this one um, is one that goes live on my personal page first, which if you're watching me on Facebook is my personal page, which is Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And I also put them onto YouTube because why not? If you're watching on YouTube, you won't see the comments, but at least you can see the whole archive. And if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can find a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. And you watch all these broadcasts there. Um, again, I put a link in the comments for you to get some help if you want to reach out to me. And if you want to share this with anybody who you think might get some value from this, please share it with them. And also, if you have some things you want to share with me in the comments, please do so below and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, so you can join me later tomorrow if you wish, or also another day of the week. I do this every day of the week, seven days, and uh, hope it's been of help to you. With that, thank you for watching. I will be back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and uh, topics, who knows, whatever shows up, shows up. But I hope this has been of value again, and I trust you'll get something, you'll be able to have more love in your life the way you want. Again, actions speak far louder than words, so watch what they do more than what they say. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.